Hello and welcome back to Let's Develop Code Hunt. As you probably remember in the last episode I managed to finish uh, sector 1, the arithmetic problems, and now we're going to start right into sector 2, the first sector of loop problems. And in this sector there are 7 code snippets and currently they're not loading because probably my inter internet connection is disrupted again because somehow the wireless in my flat sucks these days but now it loaded and we're going to start right with the first fragment try to capture the code fragment what do we know about the code fragment we get in a number and we have to output an array of numbers and it tells me okay so with an input of one i should output the array of zero with the output of three i should output an array containing 0, 1, and 2. So it's probably uh, outputting the n numbers st starting with the 0 in an array. So what I'm going to do is create an int array result, say new int with the size of n, and then I'm going to do loop int i is 0, i smaller n, i plus plus, and I'm going to say that int, oh no, sorry, result i equals i, and then I'm going to return the result. So let's see. Just a while guess, and I managed to capture the code and at the same time gain the maximum number of skill points. That was easy. Let's move on to the next one. So the second problem actually looks quite similar, only that this time... Actually even the, the tests that were generated so far look quite similar. So for one we have exactly the zero and for three we have exactly is the three elements which are 0, 3 and 6 instead of 0, 1 and 2. So uh, I would guess the logic is the same only that we have to output multiplicities of 3 this time. So we're going to follow the same scheme, create an int array result, new int array of size n for and i equals zero actually i smaller n i plus plus uh, set result i to i times three and then return the result let's see oh that did not work out that's interesting so in case of two I'm expected to have 0 and 2, so okay, probably this is i times n and not i times 3, which makes perfectly sense. And yes, with this I captured the code fragment and got the maximum skill rating. Nice, that was easy. Next one. So the schema looks quite similar actually here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to the last level and do something something really ugly. I'm going to do copy pasting. <laughs> I don't want to write this out every time. Let's see. So task three. Give me my test results. Thank you. So same loop. We again have zero in the first case and we have zero, one and three. Zero, one and three. So the first thing is the zero, the second is one and the last one is four. Interesting, so it may be B e times e actually because one times one is one two times two is four 
So let's see. Yep, with this we capture the code fragment. This is nice. And actually quite easy to do. Again, maximum skill points, so we move on. <coughs> Fourth level. Oh, this time it's the other way around. That's nice. Okay, so let's see. I have an array as input and a number as output. Array of numbers as input, actually. And for the array containing only zero, return value is zero. For the array containing only one, the result is one. For the array containing, uh, containing two times zero, it's zero. So my first wild guess is that I just have to sum up the array elements. So let's see what we can do here. We have an int result starting with zero and we have a loop that says int uh, whatever element in v. I hope I'm able to iterate over arrays like that. I'm actually not entirely sure but we'll, we'll find out here. <laughs> Hopefully he'll tell us if that's a compile error. You say result plus equals element. Make the indentation right here and return the result. Let's see what happens. Do, 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 do. This takes quite a long time. As it takes long, shouldn't be so difficult. Oh, but it was the right solution. That is nice again. Got eight maximum score points. Let's continue. 2.5. I'm on a spree here. So, okay, let's see. This time it's a different problem. We have a number m we get in, and we're supposed to return another number. And it follows, this looks like the problems from the from the first session, actually. But somehow I'm probably supposed to use a loop to solve this problem. Anyways, let's see. For the input n of 1, we're expected to return 0. For the input n of 7, we're expected to return 91. I don't really have an intuitive... Uh, an intuition about this function, so I'm going to organize myself some more values with the same scheme I used so many times over and over again. Let's see what happens here. If n equals 3, then return 5. If n equals 9, so this is a superlinear thing, whatever it actually is, 204. 204. That is 20. It's not divided. It's not dividable by nine, is it? No, it's not. Okay, so maybe if we get some more, get yeah, it's it's increasing. It's increasing. So there should be some kind of function to capture this increasing function cannot be too difficult I'm only not that sure how to use a loop for that yet but maybe I'll figure it out hopefully I'll figure it out because otherwise I won't get through this level and uh, now it's 4 and 14 right um, now we have 5 and return 30 Five return thirty. It's interesting. Eight is one hundred forty. Forty. One forty. Let's see what's next. Oh, I captured it. I captured it. Seriously. Okay. This is interesting. Okay, of course, I will keep trying because I did not achieve the maximum score points here. So, <coughs> let me think about this function. So, so, for negative inputs, if there are any, 
and for 0 and 1 as input I return 0. For everything up to 9 I return increasing value and from 10 on I obviously return 0 again. So how am I, am I supposed to use a loop to solve this problem? I don't even have something I could loop over. This is strange. So what's what's the differences between these? Between one and two, the difference is two is one. Between two and three, the difference is four, then the difference is nine, then the difference is sixteen, then the difference is twenty-five. Is it 20 yeah it's 25 it's 25 then it's 26 actually no 36 25 36 36 but then I had an idea, but so this is this is okay. This let's write it like this: plus four, then it's plus nine, plus sixteen. But this doesn't fit into my idea. Plus sixteen, plus twenty-five. Now it's fitting for a while. Twenty-five, thirty-six. No, it's actually not fitting at all. Forget it. Just, just forget about it. It was was a stupid idea. Okay, but interesting. Those are the. I think it was a right idea after all, because this time it's going to be. Uh, this is six times six, so seven times seven is forty nine. No, that's not it. It's a difference. Ah, no, but it's 49. Yeah, actually, it's 49. It's 49, and this time it's going to be uh, 8 times 8. Am I stupid? Uh, 5 times 8 is 40. 3 times 8 is 24, so it's six, yeah, 64. Uh, sorry. Sorry for that one. So it's 64, which is actually true. So these are quadratics. Let's see. So this is always the previous plus n minus 1 times n minus 1. So how do we express this? Our result is of course an integer value and maybe maybe I should actually do I need the I could do this recursively couldn't I I could probably do this recursively so uh, Okay, so I'm supposed to solve this with a loop, so I'm going to solve this with a loop. Let's see. Uh, for I'm going to loop over all the numbers that are smaller than my input. And I'm going to add, let's see, for input 0, I'm going to I'm not going to do in this loop into this loop at all, so the output is 0. That's what I expect. Input one. I'm going to go into this loop for e for i equals zero. So the result is going to be zero in any case. For input two, I want to have two, so I'm going to into it for i times zero, which doesn't make any sense. And for i times one, uh, i equals to one, so one is just what I wanted to add. 
which I don't need to go into for for the for the zero case at all because it will not change anything. And for i times uh, n time is e blah, sorry for that. As for n equals three, I'm going to go in here for i equals one, which will add one, and for i equals 2 which is supposed to add 4 so it's supposed to add i times i return result right yes this captures it and I guess if I remove this stuff down here the only interesting thing is what is it returning I mean, for n times 10, I'm returning something different than, than 0 now, and it still captures it, right? Oh, well, but this is not the nicest solution you could think of. Is because of my performance idea here. No, it's not. So you say this can be done in a better way. Interesting. So let's find out how. Let's find out how. So for every number below n, I'm adding its itself times itself to my result which is a pretty easy logic but apparently you tell me this is possible in an easier way but currently I'm not exactly sure how I mean I could do this recursively but recursively would not be a loop It could say return puzzle of n minus one. I could say if n equals zero, return zero, else return puzzle of n minus one. I guess I need a praise here plus. Um, this is not really nice. N minus one, N minus one times N minus one. Ah, come on. I guess this would be equivalent, but it's not really nicer. Is it equivalent or did I make make a mistake? Or did I kill its equivalent? And it's the most elegant solution you could think of. This is not really containing a loop right now, but okay, I found the best possible solution or one of the best possible solutions. Thanks for the rating. And as I think already about 20 minutes past, I'm going to stop here for this episode. We managed to finish the first five levels of uh, the first loop sector so with a little bit of luck I'm going to be able to finish the loop sector uh, in the next episode but then again I had such ambitions before and I failed miserably so we'll see we'll see how much I manage next time see you around <laughs>